All right, what's on the bench? Uh, uh, got a big box in the mail today, and uh, this was in it. So uh, I found a seller who had a couple things that I liked and uh, made him some offers, and he took this one. Uh, this is a Tektronix 335. It's a dual channel oscilloscope. I think it's 35 megahertz, if I remember right, but uh, it's a cutie. And uh, I like these uh, series of scopes that were made in collaboration with Sony. So it's a Sony Tektronix scope. I used to own a 336, if you remember, I made a bunch of videos on those. But, uh, and then I, I had a 200 series, which is the small little ones. I wasn't really a big fan of those, but the 300 series was nice. Uh, there's a 33 something or other that's a, a storage version of this as well. This is not the storage one. Um, but uh, 335. So uh, it has the um, uh, inputs on the side. So you're wondering where are the BNCs? They're on the side here. So, uh, you know, channel one, channel two, and um, trigger. Um, over here, you can, you can power it up with some type of external battery, um, 24 volt battery. So that's kind of cool. Um, the back, there's not much to see. You can set the voltages and nothing on, nothing, on, nothing on that side. So anyway, um, yeah. Um, now the guy had this one and, uh, he also had another one. <laughs> he also had this one. Now I've wanted one of these for a while and I haven't seen a good price on one. They still go pretty for, I mean, they're still cheap, but they, they went for too much money that I wanted to spend just for a junker that I, that I you know, can spend time repairing, have fun. Um, so this one, uh, the power cord's been snipped off. Now, um, that can be a good thing or that can be a bad thing. So one of the reasons that um, when things are sent to the junk, and they cut the power cord off. It could mean that it's busted and dangerous, but more likely it's, um, we're identifying this as a scrap. We don't want somebody to resell it. Um, we don't want to take any liability for somebody who did plug it in. And so for insurance reasons and stuff, they just cut the cord off. So we're gonna to have to put a new cord on this and see if it does anything and uh, try to get him working. Um, there's some funky little switches here that I think need some uh, tender loving care, um, but that's that one. So what's this bottom one though? Let's, let's, uh, let's move this one out of the way. So this bottom one you may have seen before. Uh, it is a ruggedized version of one of their scopes. So let me kind of flip it open here. So uh, this one has a latches that are uh, a non-functional, they're missing. I'm gonna have to uh, reverse engineer those and make some latches for it. But this is cover in the front that then uh, goes over to expose the front of the oscilloscope. And uh, it goes it goes to the back. Let's see if I can show this. There is some lacking, latching mechanisms here and these do work. Um, so there we go. Now this is latched into place and it can act as the stand for the oscilloscope. And then we flip, that's good enough. We can flip the handles back. So let me move you in. Um, so uh, I don't remember, I like these 2000 scopes, the 2000 series, and I don't remember which one I had. I believe I had maybe a 60 megahertz or a hundred megahertz. I forget which one. Uh, it wasn't this one, but um, I, I really thought it was one of the best Tektronix scopes made for a hobbyist. You know, 100 megahertz was a fine bandwidth and it's really crystal clear and the not, I just, everything about it seemed to be like one of their pinnacle products for, for an analog oscilloscope. I just thought it was really good. Um, this is the 336. Like I said, it's ruggedized. It has this case that goes over the front. So a lot of times there's just a piece of plastic that snaps on here, but this one has a, um, uh, has a, a nice uh, piano hinge here to put it all together. And it's got stuff built in to the, uh, to the hatch. <laughs> it's got some external triggering here for channel B and it's got this weird display. And um, the display I believe is for the delayed sweep or measuring the differences between channel A and channel B. It's some type of time reference. You can, you can actually 
measure how much time is between two signals. And that's about all I know about it. Um, I didn't buy it for that. I bought it for this part. Um, I just think this is, uh, these are really, 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 really good oscilloscopes. Now, uh, this one did not have a cut power cord. In fact, uh, the seller threw in a brand new power cord, uh, which is nice. So let's, um, let's go ahead and put in a power cord in the back. One of the standard, standard types here. Let's see. All right, and a go button here, and I got an LED, uncowl. Oh, there we go. We get a we get a trace. Um, if you ever buy a um, analog oscilloscope, um, and it's it, it might have buttons pushed in it and maladjusted. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna flip everything around to see if I can't just screw it up. So you buy this brand new thing and you look at it and you turn it on and it does nothing at all and you're super bummed out. Okay, you just can't figure it out. And so you go, oh, I need to. Oh no, I don't see anything. Oh, I don't see anything. Well, there's this magic button here called Beam Find. So Tektronics put that in there on purpose. So. If you can get a trace on the front, if you can get some type of beam on the front, you know you're good. You know your tube is still good. And then there's a matter of how do we get it to do good stuff? And then you have to go around and say, okay, well, I want channel one. Uh, let's see here. I want, uh, I don't want that button. That says channel two invert. I don't care about that. You want these buttons, you don't want them on ground. We'll put these both on, let's say AC, AC, or DC, DC. Let's put them both on AC. That's kind of a more safe thing to do. Um, this may be screwed up. It says here, okay, we'll go to A. We wanna, we wanna trigger on A. Uh, let's do AC. Let's, uh, what is this? Source, vertical mode, auto. Yeah, you don't wanna go normal. You want auto triggering. Hopefully something will happen. Uh, let's do the beam find again. Yeah, nothing's happening. Uh, yeah, I screwed it up good, didn't I? Let's see here. Da, 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 da. A, we don't want 10, we don't want this mag. Uh, uh, turn the triggering. And let's put this on ground and see if we can't get a sweep out of it. Nope, no sweep. So you can see that you think you have a completely dead, dead oscilloscope. So it takes some time to figure out where all of the buttons should go. Okay, that should be there. And that's a good place to be. Uh, these are okay. No, we're not triggering anything. That's okay. Uh, let's see here. Boy, I really busted it good. Oh, there we go. Now when I push the uh, beam find, I'm getting a line, which means I have a line somewhere but it might be going too fast to see, and it might not be in the up-down directions to see, okay? And so, there we go. I can, I can push the beam find, and then I can say, okay, there, right in the middle, I know that's doing something. And um, it's not triggering. We should have a, something happening over here for triggering, and we're not getting anything. So let's see here. We've got A. And we have normal triggering. That's not working. And we'll get it here eventually. There we go. Let's put it on something like five volts per division. We're still, oh, now we're not getting a sweep at all. Ah, oh, now we are. So that's, a, that's some type of clue. Put it back in the middle again. Let's see if we can't get it to sweep. All right, so our last clue was we didn't have the intensity up all the way. It was doing stuff. When you push the beam find, it goes really, really bright. And, but you need to have intensity to see something. So turn up the intensity, it seems to be doing something now. We're, we're, we've got auto in there. Now we can hit the focus and we can make that a nice and, nice and sharp trace there. And there we go. But now we have a working, a working oscilloscope. It takes a little while. But you would have thought, oh, I've got to rip in there and I need to start repairing it and everything. No, you just need to get all the buttons that were in, in, where, where they're in their happy place, okay? So uh, we're going to leave these on, let's leave these on DC. 
Uh, we have that needs a bit of calibration. It should stay pretty pretty solid when you when you change the uh, volts to revision. It should stay, but that's a calibration type of thing. All right. Uh, some of the knobs are missing. Uh, in fact, one, two, three knobs are missing, and uh, so we'll need to uh, we need to replace those. And uh, so let's see if we can't uh, turn on a waveform and uh, get something to look nice. Okay, I've turned on a function generator and now we've got some strange looking things here. It's too big, so let's go down here. Let's move this over so I have a sine wave coming in. So that's, that's working. Uh, let's change it to something more interesting. Uh, let's see, that's 120 hertz. Let's say it's one, let's say it's one kilohertz. Let's go ahead and, and do that. And then let's say that it's uh, some type of, uh, let's see, here's a sync pulse. So that's, that's a nice, uh, that's something nice to look at. Look at the sync pulse. Now we can do a nice, a nice focus on it. Yeah, see, I just love the way these look. I don't know if that shows good on camera, but it's just, it's just a lovely display of these, uh, these 2000 series tech scopes. Uh, so that's working great. All right, let's see if the, uh, Let's see if that weird display down there can do something. We need to go into uh, uh, A intensified by B, I think. Okay, that worked. Can we, oh yeah, that's working. All right. All right, that's working. Uh, let's see, where's the intensity? That's probably just part of the Cal system, so we don't need to worry about that. There we go. So you can see that we have A intensified by B. And we'll come in here and we'll say, let's go to the B trace. It should blow it up. Yeah, there we go. And, oh, look at that. Look at that. See down there? Can you see that? Uh, I need to make my camera bright. Yeah, we got, oops, way down there. Let's see if I can focus on that. Focus, focus. All right, let me just go to uh, manual focus and uh, force it over there. Yeah, there we go. So we're getting, uh, we're getting a number down there. Uh, it says six, well, that's really dark. <laughs> I can't read it. Uh, it says six, six, 65 microseconds, 65 microseconds. Okay. And if I turn this knob, it changes when I, and I put them right on top of one another. Ah, we're right on top of another one where it's zero. And then as I move them apart, let's move them apart, uh, two divisions and two divisions is about 40 um, and we're at 20 or two microseconds milliseconds we're at 0 0.2 200 yeah i think that's right nice all right so that seems to be working too i've got a i got to read up on how to use a how to use that display down there um i don't you couldn't see what i was doing uh, but um when I move this back and forth, that uh, second, just like this, a mirror, uh, um, a duplicate image. And if I uh, put that one on a line and then I move this one over, one, two, three, four, five, um, it's reading 100 microseconds. So obviously it's 20 microseconds per division. So yeah, that's, that's working. Like I said, I got to read up on this and try to figure out what's going on here. It does have this separate trigger B. So I think you can look at an A signal and a B signal and then measure the time between the two of them. I think that's pretty cool. Anyway, so this thing seems to be working a treat. Um, there is this uncal button and that's usually uh, these guys here. When they're not in the cal position, you'll get that light there. Uh, these are uh, variable uh, gain and then when you put them to one side there's usually a click this is like a, a oh I heard it click oh there we go it worked okay that went away I didn't rotate it hard enough there's a little click and that that uh, says that both of these are in their calibrated position and you'll be able to use the numbers here and the uh, lines to measure volts correctly assuming it's been calibrated um, and then if you take it out of Cal, either, either one of these, that lights up. 
So I say this scope is in perfect working condition. I paid $65, which I think is a steal. <laughs> um, yeah, pretty good. I think that includes shipping, 65 free shipping. So yeah, good deal. Okay, so um, I will read up more about this one and I will uh, uh, figure out uh, some videos for that game. We'll put, we'll try to put a power cord on it and get it going and stuff. But uh, uh, this guy doesn't seem like he needs any fix in at all. So I'll just have to uh, read more about the use of it and then put it in some videos. I know people like analog uh, scopes. Um, although digital scopes are so cheap these days, I still recommend you get a digital scope. But if you do like the analog, these are getting cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. Like I said, $65 free shipping, 100 megahertz tech from Textronics. This is a fine instrument. Um, so yeah, there you go.